This could be any Sunday football scene. But these friends aren't cheering for their hometown team. I grew up being a Broncos fan, a Rockies fan, and now I just kind of, whoever's on my team that given week that I need to do well is, you know, who I'm rooting for. Along with legions of others, they're playing daily fantasy sports, putting hundreds of millions of dollars on the line every week. That type of action brings out the pros. Wake up at seven o'clock and this is all I do every single day. How many hours a week do you work? I work between 70 and 80 every single week. And those pros are raking in the cash. There's definitely been some six figure months. But not everyone is so lucky. Night in, night out, when you're constantly on the negative end of the ledger, that's, that's not fun. Now, the industry is under fire. If you live in the state of Nevada, you can no longer play DraftKings or FanDuel. Bottom line, New York declares this game illegal and not fantasy. The big question prompting the state bans is DFS gambling. It's not. Uh, it's a game of skill. Gambling, without a doubt. As a passionate sports fan who waded deep into online poker in the mid-2000s, I wanted to find out who's right. Who are the winners? Who are the losers? And perhaps most of all, can a passionate sports fan like me actually win? 1.3% of the player pool wins 91% of the profit. Sharks take down 90% of the money. Our journey into the deep end. Romit Merchandani is a native Bostonian and recent NYU grad who works at a tech startup. We met with him very recently, just before New York banned DFS. Until then, he played daily fantasy sports every week. I think it just makes the games a lot more interesting because now I'm just like instead of just waiting for the pass game every week, now I'm like slightly more invested into every other game, which is fun. That Friday, he walked me through his picks for Sunday. I mean, at quarterback, we got Fitz. For the running backs, we got Todd Gurley, Doug Martin on the Bucks. Uh, tight end Ladarius Green, Flex, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously. Obviously. So, obviously. The daily fantasy sports phenomenon, covering virtually every major college and pro sport, started with the launch of industry pioneer FanDuel in 2009, followed by its primary competitor DraftKings in 2011. DFS is for big money with daily wagers. You can play against a single person or in a pool where the top half wins. In both cases, winning doubles your money. Or you can play tournaments, the most popular of which have million dollar first prizes. Merchandani played on the DraftKings mobile app. So this is the lobby, this is where they kind of just feature all the different contests and you can like sort by you know your risk appetite, how much you want to bet, what the different prizes are. And now it lets you select by position who you actually want to put up and you have your salary here. So obviously it works off a salary cap basis. We joined Merchandani and his friends that Sunday to watch the games and track their lineups. Ooh, hey, again? Another one! Yo, they love we actually have a pretty good setup. Someone will be cheering for this game, I'll be cheering for this game. And the best part, like none of our own personal teams are playing. Big Sunday and Monday, a lot more interesting. Oh! DFS has grown exponentially, now boasting 2 million players. The vast majority are male and white. Half are between the ages of 25 and 35, and the majority make more than $75,000 a year. Feeding the frenzy? Wall-to-wall -wall commercials like these, appealing to the audience's fanhood. 1.1 million fans like you have won money on FanDuel. FanDuel pays out $75 million a week. Get off the sidelines and make some of that yours. It can really pay to be a fan. Fans like you, it can really pay to be a fan. A narrative both companies push hard. You know sports, you're smart. There's money for the taking, get in the game. Baited with the lure of million dollar paydays, the commercial certainly seemed to strike a chord with players like Romit's friend Raj. I like waking up Sunday morning knowing that I'm going to be a millionaire on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk like a big game, but I, I have very realistic expectations. He definitely shoots for the moon every week. Hoping to strike big this weekend, right? That's why we keep playing. Damn, I effed up. I went to school, uh, majored in accounting. Um, and uh, was a licensed CPA for five years. We traveled to Denver to visit Nick Dunham, one of the top 20 professional DFS players in the world. He's a prime example of the type of player Romit and Raj are actually playing against. Dunham started playing casually in 2010. Once we realized that you could put more work into it, build models and start to hone your skills and get better and better, you know, it became more like a, a business than a hobby. And Dunham has put his number crunching skills to profitable use. His predictive models factor in a host of data, including player stats, injury reports, coaching tendencies, and even weather. 
based on the projections that I've given each of these players, this is, according to my model, the optimal team to get the most fantasy points. And how much did his final lineup earn him that weekend? $40,000. I started making more money playing daily fantasy sports than I was making doing public accounting. And that was awesome because, you know, I mean, who could say that they would rather do somebody's books over playing fantasy sports? If you were to put your profit in the terms of a salary, about how much do you make in a year from this? Uh, into the six figures to the total, you know. Mid six figures, low six figures. Last year was mid six figures. Winning at that level requires more than just know-how and dedication. It demands a volume and lots of it. For football right now, it's usually two to 3,000 contests per start time. Like most pros, Dunham enters thousands of contests a week, ensuring a large enough sample size for his statistical edge to materialize. Is daily fantasy sports gambling? No, absolutely not. If you have a complete new person who, say, plays me on one day of MLB, and they've never played daily fantasy baseball, I guarantee that I would beat them 80 to 90% of the time. And to me, that, you know, that means it's a game of skill. Dunham's very way of life hinges on that distinction, as does the fate of the entire industry. Daily fantasy sports now finds itself in the crosshairs. From the satirists. Daily fantasy sports, the most addictive thing you can do on your phone other than perhaps cocaine. To the politicians. And effectively, it's day trading without any regulation at all. The industry is under fire, based on the very definition of the game. Under federal law, online games of skill are legal, whereas gambling is not. Tom Griffiths, a co-founder of FanDuel, is unequivocal. It's a common misconception that daily fantasy is gambling. It's not. Uh, it's a game of skill. We caught up with Griffiths back in October when a separate controversy was in the news. Employees at two major companies are accused of gambling with inside information that millions of customers did not have. Newly filed court documents show FanDuel may have encouraged employees to play on other sites, but not with inside information. When the scandal broke, however, the companies were quick to respond. As of this week, uh, banning our employees uh, permanently from playing on any of the sites. Meanwhile, scrutiny of the industry has ratcheted up. The U.S. Department of Justice and FBI are in the preliminary stage of an investigation into daily fantasy sports operators. The first shoe to drop was Nevada, which declared DFS gambling. Then came the most high-profile case. New York's attorney general ruled DFS is gambling and illegal in New York, a state home to FanDuel and the most players of any other state. Industry employees and a few fans fought back, staging a protest at the Attorney General's office proclaiming, Game of skill! Game of skill! Billions are riding on that. Major media companies and other deep-pocketed backers, including Google and Wall Street titan KKR, have invested in one or the other top two sites. Even the NBA, MLB, and Major League Soccer have invested. It's easy to see why sports leagues love DFS. It's fundamentally changing the way that people consume sports. Uh, we see when people start playing FanDuel, even if they were a fantasy fan already, uh, they consume 40% more sports than they had in the past. The craze. The crash. It's reminiscent of online poker a decade ago. Is DFS headed there too? All roads lead to Las Vegas the heart of American gambling culture. We're here to meet up with two very different people who know a lot about daily fantasy sports. If you got caught up in the poker boom last decade, you know Ed Miller, a pro player and author of one of the definitive books on poker strategy, the first book on the subject I read when I started playing seriously. He played DFS part-time until Nevada outlawed it in October. It you know, kind of came out of the poker community a little bit and it was clear, you know, there's money and it's a game and that's kind of what I do, so, <laughs> so I jumped in. One of the primary objections I've heard from individuals I've talked to is that they are diehard sports fans who eat, sleep, live, and breathe, let's say baseball for instance, and they're getting consistently beaten by people who are stat geeks what would you say to, to that objection? You're misunderstanding the game <laughs> if you think that. It's a game 
that's kind of based around baseball performance. But if you don't attack the game aspect first, and you think just knowing about baseball is gonna do the trick, you're, you're not gonna win. You know, it's that simple. All the pros we talk to are big sports fans, and you do need that knowledge to succeed at DFS, but it's not enough. You need a lot more to win. And if you've ever played any game on the internet, you know that when you first log on and start playing, no matter how good you think you are, you're gonna get killed. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the reality. There's people out there on the internet who are way better than you. In July, Miller made waves co-authoring a study that quantified exactly how extreme those disparities in the DFS ecosystem are. According to the analysis, the pros, or sharks, represent about 1% of the players, but take in more than 90% of the profits. The big fish come next. They lose a lot of money, feed the sharks, and keep the ecosystem afloat. And the minnows, or small stakes players, are at the bottom, representing 80% of the players, but a small portion of the pot. Miller cautions that it was based on a small sample, but the results are directionally accurate. The 91% you're saying might be a little bit high, but you do think that one and a half percent-ish are taking down a pretty substantial portion of the profits. Absolutely, there's no question. That was the point of my article. I think the game, you know, has some flaws, and, 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 and this is one of the flaws, is basically that it is prone to a relatively small number of people uh, taking a lot of the money. Online poker was similarly lopsided, but was brought down in part by site operators' offshore headquarters and shady handling of player funds, problems DFS doesn't have. What do you think are some of the things that an average consumer or sports fan doesn't know about these games that maybe they should before they get involved? You probably are not gonna be a winner out of the gate, that just knowing about sports is not enough. You're gonna have to be immersed in the game, you're gonna have to think about it like a game and approach it like a game. When I get off that plane, I feel alive. And I just, I wanna be close to the action. My name is Mario, and I'm from Harrison, New Jersey, and I'm a longshoreman in the port of Newark. Mario prefers only to give his first name. I met up with him in Las Vegas while he was on vacation, but as he tells it, Vegas isn't vacation at all. When I'm here, I'm home. And when I'm in New Jersey, I, it's just a job for me. I would consider myself a gambling man, especially when I'm in Las Vegas. Never really had a problem. I never got that deep into things where I had to like hock a ring or sell a car. Mario told me he's a bit of a baseball savant, falling in love with the game at the age of four and having the ability to read a box score like a book even in elementary school. He routinely won season-long fantasy leagues prior to trying out DFS. Daily Fantasy Sports started for me um, in 2014. Uh, I, I heard about it, I saw it, I saw the commercials and I dipped my toes in to it and I got my, my ass handed to me. And when you look at the people that finished first or second, it's the same names all the time. It's never a different name. It's kind of like sitting at a blackjack table and somebody's there holding all the aces. How much do you think you have lost playing over the last year and a half? Money-wise, over $10,000. I lost some sleep, lost some days at work. There was a lot of low points because every day was the same as putting these hours in and getting nothing out, out of it at the end of the day. Do you feel like you were cheated out of any money? No. I know what I, I, know what I was getting to, what I was getting into when I put the money in. If I lose, I lose. I just want to know I got beat fair and square. I told Mario about Ed Miller's study. One of the most cited findings is that 1.3% of players at the very top were taking down somewhere in the neighborhood of 91% of all entry fees entered. Wow, I didn't know about that. If I knew what I, if I known about that, maybe I would have stopped playing. That's, that's, that's tough. That's more than what a casino is gonna come away with. That's, that's wild. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like a fish. <laughs> Definitely. Jonathan Bales received degrees in philosophy and psychological statistics from a small Pennsylvania college in 2009. Once a resident of Brooklyn, he now calls Philadelphia home. Uh, they'll be done like uh, today or tomorrow. 
I wake up before the sun comes up because I'm so like excited to just do my job. He plays professionally, but unlike Nick Dunham in Colorado, Bales focuses mostly on tournaments, and his strategy hinges more on game theory and psychology than predictive analytics. It's easier to predict what other people are thinking than it is to predict performance. Really, I'm looking for um, how can I benefit the most when other people are wrong. I think it is um, a lot like day trading in that you're buying and selling players based on um, what their perceived value is. I think Daily Fantasy is a much better investment than the uh, stock market. Really? I do because Daily Fantasy is peer to peer. So if I wanted to play you, right, for, for $5,000 tonight and a head to head, we could do that, right? <laughs> but we could do that. So it's peer to peer, so you can have a, a bit of a, of a bigger edge. Because his primary focus is tournaments, it's not enough to just score a lot of points. He has to beat everyone in the field. Whereas I think most people are trying to maximize, like how can I score as many points as possible? I don't want to score as many points as possible. I want to win a league. And I think that those are different. Todd Gurley's gonna to be the top owned um, running back in tournaments. That might mean that that's a player that I actually want to get away from. This contrarian strategy has been very successful for Bales. About how much money do you make in a year? Um, just just from playing? It's in the six figures. Baseball this year, the first week was the best week I ever had in Daily Fantasy. Like the first five days of MLB were ridiculous. How much money did you make in five days? Um, multiple six figures. And then... In five days? Yeah. Bale says he had 15 straight losing days after that hot streak but the month was still profitable for him, a recurring theme among top players. And to say that poker or daily fantasy isn't a game of skill is ridiculous. I don't think there's been a, a three month period ever where I've not made money. But is that in, in a way, a little bit of an unlevel playing field and a bit unfair that you who are a professional at this are playing lots of games against novices? The game itself is very an even playing field. Everyone can approach it. Everyone could do what I do if they wanted to, right? Like, I don't have any special skills. What he said next, I didn't see coming. So Nietzsche, I really like to read, and he's really influenced the way that I play Daily Fantasy. How does Nietzsche influence the way you play Daily Fantasy sports? I think just the general process of, like, critiquing everything and thinking about how we are going to go about solving problems. Is, is generally helpful. DFS, is it gambling or skill? I think pros like Dunham and Bales prove it requires a specific and sophisticated set of skills, which means for people like Mario and me, it doesn't pay to be a fan. Not really. That's just not enough. For casual players picking up the game, they're gonna start thinking, well, what players should I pick? You know, whereas when I approach the game, I, that's not the first question I ask. What is the first question you ask? how to win, <laughs> you know, how do you win this game?